Look at that man. Why would anybody that gorgeous need to rape someone? Recent state Supreme Court rulings concerning capital punishment. Renner. What am I, invisible or something? I'm just so sick of hearing about that low life. I should just lock him up and throw away the key. For breakfast? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Santa's gonna be here in a minute. Uh-uh. Wait a minute, honey. Lou said he heard you up again late last night. That's funny. I never pictured Lou as a light sleeper. Okay, Val. What's bothering you? Well, don't you think things have been a little awkward around here lately? Yeah. I agree. We haven't been seeing eye to eye on everything. Mother, that's not it. I never know when Lou is going to be around here or not. I can't have my friends over. What are you talking about? Who can't you have over? Well, when was the last time that you saw Sandy inside this house? I mean, why do you think she never visits anymore? Well, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? Well, she's uncomfortable. She's embarrassed. What the hell is she embarrassed about? This is a very small town. How many mothers do you think are openly having an affair with a married man? Lou's wife left him a year ago, and who the hell are you to judge me? I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what's bothering me. You asked, okay? Well, wait a minute! Get the hell out of here. What's the matter? Nothing. Be a 
read your work over the weekend, and I was pleasantly surprised to find how mature and genuinely thoughtful they all were. But this poem was especially moving for me. I'd like to read it for you. It's entitled, Another Boyfriend. Playfully, I can watch you doing your natural things until finally you feel my eyes and look up half smiling, wishing I would join the game and share the laughter instead of sitting out and watching and almost waiting. You think I'm looking for a flaw, a smudge to mar the beauty. But try to understand the love there is in sitting quietly and watching your game grow to fill the world I cherish. I'm sorry you felt my eyes and had to make another smile. You want to tell us what inspired this, Valerie? Uh, I don't know. Oh, but there must have been something, someone, somebody who captured your curiosity. Well, it's not really about anybody. I mean, I don't have a boyfriend or anything. I just wrote it. You mean you just invented this? You just imagined how you would feel if you had someone that you cared that much about? Yes. I think you blew everybody away. Why didn't you ever tell me you tried like that? Yeah, Sandy, I'm, I'm already embarrassed enough, okay? <laughs> hey, you. How come you don't call me anymore, sweetheart? Because you're one conceited dirtbag, Robert Fowler. Ooh, well, you deserve me, darling. I don't know what to do about him. I really like him, but I don't want to go running after him again like I did last time. He'll take advantage of me again. You know what I mean? Guys, I mean, why did life get so complicated? I think I detect a victim of that common teenage affliction called youthful idealism. Oh. Am I right? Sometimes that girl can just be so damn self-righteous. Oh, it's funny how they know so much more than we do. On top of the gun control lecture, James is now on my case about capital punishment. This was an Adam Brennan. What do you think? What do you think? Adam, you think you're getting a fair trial. What do you think your chances are? You seem to have a lot of fans, Adam. Anything you want to say to them? Don't worry about him. He'll be old news by the end of the week. Adam, you have a statement for us? Adam what do you have to say? Adam, are you concerned that John Henry Wallace cannot be found? Back up, Adam. We have no comment now. Let's get him upstairs. Back up. Come on upstairs. Well. If you saw that, you just witnessed a perfect example of what a lot of young women are calling Adam Brenner's sexy charm. Miss Sims, when this trial began, you said that your office felt that this was an open and shut case. It still is. Well, it doesn't seem to be going so smooth now. That's because the defense is purposely bearing the facts to create a false sense of reasonable doubt. It's a very famous tactic, I can assure you. But clouding the issues here won't work. The defense has been claiming that Brenner's former roommate, John Henry Wallace, is the real killer. What's your response? Another distortion of the fact. Wallace is the registered owner of the house. This took place. All the evidence we have points to Brenner. But there's a nationwide manhunt for Wallace. Yes. We'd like to talk to him. As a co-suspect? I'd rather not comment. Perkins has promised to put Brenner on the stand by the end of this week. How do you feel about that? Well, it is his trial.
scared me. Go get your own bowl. You smell like a brewery. Can I go upstairs now, please? Look, Valerie, I, I never, I never would have kissed you if I, I didn't think you wanted me to. I should have never let you near me in the first place. Come on, Val. It'll be our little secret. bad cramps, Mom. I didn't get any sleep last night. Okay. You just stay in bed and get some rest. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I'll check with you later. Feel better. Okay. Bye, Mom. for the Honorable Judge Alvin Martinson. Be seated. Counselor? The defense calls Adam Brenner. Let's try to make this short and sweet, Adam. Forensics evidence, including blood samples, carpet fibers, and fingerprints indicates conclusively that six young women were murdered in the van you were driving when arrested. Did you murder any one of those women? No, sir, I did not. But you admit that for the three-month period during which those women were killed, you traveled with John Henry Wallace, the owner of the van, and the one man whom police have positively established as having been at the places where two of the victims' bodies were later found. Were you Wallace's partner in these killings? No, sir, I was not. Then will you please explain to the court how you came to be linked with Wallace and how you came to be driving his van the day you were arrested. Now, I want you to relax, Adam. And please, be as specific as possible. I met John Wallace in a bar in Anchorage, Alaska on April 1st last year. 
John said he'd just been laid off an oil rig on the North Slope and was driving to Texas. He seemed okay. So I thought, what the hell? So, you two left Anchorage. Right, and four days later we hit Eureka. John said he had some friends there that he had to see. And that's when the trouble started. What happened, Eureka? It was 3 o'clock in the morning. I just finished driving the last leg. I was really tired and wanted to crash. While John went into this old apartment to see his friends, I went to the back of the van to sleep. The next thing I know is the side door flies open and two guys jump me and hit me over the head with a tire iron. When I came to, I went to go look for John and I found him unconscious on the floor of the apartment. So when you entered the apartment, Adam, what did you find? Well, like I said, he was unconscious on the floor and I thought he'd been hit like I was, but he said his friends had spiked his drinks and robbed him too. Objection, Your Honor. John Henry Wallace is not on trial here. Your Honor, the only evidence tying my client to these crimes is circumstantial. The only person directly linked to any of these crimes is John Henry Wallace. This is just another smokescreen to try to shift the blame from the defendant. The fact that my client has a perfectly clean record and Wallace has a history of prior felonies is very significant. Dear Adam, even though we've never met, I feel I know so much about you. I watch the progress of your trial and each day share more and more of your growing misery and frustration. Maybe I'll never know all the pain you feel, but I do understand the feeling of being persecuted. I want you to know that you're not alone. But in my heart, I know that you could never have done the things they said you Where the hell have you been? Doing you a favor? Well, I hope so, because you owe me one. She took attendance. Thanks. This is Major Major. You're never going to believe who has a crush on you. Who? James Childs. He wants to go out with you. James? Yes. The guy in our English lit class. You know, he plays varsity basketball. Yeah, okay, I know who he is. Sandy, I'm glad you finally got here. Oh, I've been here. Well, try being here a little sooner next time. Nice try, Valerie. Anyway, he and Robert get along real well, and I was thinking, you know, just kind of off the top of my head, maybe we could double. And James has such an excellent car. Yes, and a very nice, large backseat. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I think it's going to be perfect, and I'm telling you that James is the man of your dreams. Get some help! Oh my God, okay. 
assume you're aware that John Henry Wallace's remains washed up south of Anchor Bay four days ago. Are you aware of that, Mr. Brenner? Yes. I've been told. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the coroner states, John Henry Wallace, male, Caucasian, age 25, died of acute asphyxiation induced by strangulation and the crushing of the esophagus caused by garroting with a woven rope or a lanyard of approximately 3 16 inch in diameter. In plain language, Mr. Brenner, you brutally murdered Wallace the same way you did Susan... I Carson, object! Shallow, Linda Alvarez and all the rest... I didn't kill anyone! You I did, object, you Your Honor, my client is not charged with the murder of John Henry Wallace. I didn't kill anyone! I didn't! I didn't! I didn't! Your Honor, the only one guilty of that! I didn't kill anyone! 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 happy I was to receive your letter. Your belief in my innocence has given me new strength when I need it most. Just knowing you care gives me the will to continue the fight. I shall look forward to the day my ordeal is finally over and we can get to know each other better. Until then, I think of you often and hope to hear from you soon. Sincerely, Adam Brenner. I forgot to take the lamb chops out of the freezer this morning. Do me a favor and take out three, okay? Lou's coming to dinner tonight. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, I've got a date tonight, so you guys will probably be eating alone. I can hardly hear you. What did you say? I've got a date with James Childs tonight. We're doubling with Sandy, and um, probably go get some pizza and catch a movie or something. James. Hmm. Hey, what's all that noise in the background? Adam Brenner's just been convicted. Guilty on all counts. He's going to be sentenced next week, and uh, with any luck, he'll get the gas chamber. Okay, sweetheart, call me if you're going to be late. I love you. Bye. Guard the car, you guys. Oh, here comes the choo choo. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Starting to smell like a gymnasium in there. Not to mention hot. She always like that? Well, we've known each other for a long time, but. Since I started running track, we've become a lot closer. But to answer your question, I don't know. She's pretty unpredictable. I heard that you're, um, you're gonna graduate this June, a year early? Uh, I went to summer school to build up enough credits. What's the hurry? Because I hate high school about as much as I think you do. Where'd you get that idea? Your poetry. Oddly, what I call your typical 
juvenile fantasies. Well, she wasn't supposed to read it to the class. You know, Val, you should be out in the real world doing, living. You know, finishing high school is a fact of life. But that doesn't mean you have to sit around going through some awkward teenage bull. You know? I mean, I don't wake up every morning and say, I can't face this anymore. I just wake up and scream. <laughs> no, no, I just, I just figure out how to go on. You don't have a mother who doesn't care what you do. I mean, everything I do is okay because it's supposedly what I want, you know? Yeah, well, you're lucky. At least she's not a cop like my dad. I and mean, I think he's completely forgotten how to trust somebody. Can you blame him, though? Yeah, right. But does he have to bring his work home with him? I mean, all the rules, the regulations. He's immediately suspicious of anything's out of place in the house. With all the problems parents cause, it's amazing anyone can grow up right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my point. It's up to us. Rise, Adam Brennan. This court agrees with the prosecution's view that you committed these crimes with calculated viciousness, each one after careful deliberation. I therefore condemn you to die in the gas chamber at the maximum security prison in San Jose. No. Lord grant you the mercy you never showed your victims. No. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Please, please. No. No. It's all right. No. No, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. No. you know something the judge and jury didn't? No, I'm just telling you what I think. And what I think is you should be back in school where you might learn something. Mother, I'm not in kindergarten. Well, you're sure acting like it right now. I can't believe the way you treat me. Even though the Russia reporters hammered him with questions and slowed his departure, Brenner seemed strangely patient with the situation. Obviously distraught and shaken by the court's decision, Brenner appeared to be in control of what must be great anger and frustration at this surprise sentence. I must say, I find it strange that a man of such obvious sensitivity should be going now to spend the rest of his life awaiting execution on death row. This is Kathy Crowley, live at the Ukiah Superior Courthouse. Ha, <laughs> ha, 
<laughs> Welcome home, sweetheart. <laughs> Thank you, Brenner. I know all about you, and I still like you. Now, if you want to stand on your own, you got to take care of yourself. And looking at you, I don't think you can do that. I think you just might need somebody to help you. I know I did.
Watch out, Jackie Joyner. This personal cheering section of yours getting to be a regular thing, or what? What, you mean my new best friend? I don't know. Let's see, it's been about six weeks, so what's the story? Is it love or lust, baby? <laughs> Neither one, smartass. I thought you liked James. I do, I just, I don't feel that serious about him, you know? And I don't think I ever will. So, I mean, he just wants to date you. He doesn't want to marry you, does he? No, of course not. And then he's talking all serious, making me very uncomfortable. Just don't feel the same way about it. So don't then. I mean, look, the guy got you off the bench into the game, right? So who says you gotta spend the whole season with him? Yeah, I guess. Unless you got some other guy already on the side, huh? No, would you stop? I don't have anybody else. Come on, please. Spare me. All right, but it isn't what your degenerate mind thinks at all. It's totally platonic. It's like he's not even real. He's about a million miles away, and I'll probably never get to see him again. But he's sensitive. And he's kind. And extremely intelligent. And he's probably the most gorgeous guy I've ever laid my eyes on. I don't know, Val. I think you're in over your head this time. I mean, this guy's geographically undesirable, and you're still interested? Well, he writes. He writes beautiful letters. Letters? Let me get this straight. I mean, you have seen this guy, right? Well, I think you ought to tell me who he is. I mean, you get me all interested and curious like that, and don't tell me. I just don't think that's fair. Look, the only reason I said anything anyway is that if he can't be in my life, then I'd like to find somebody who's a lot like him. And that somebody isn't James. Shop. Hey, Valerie, I made a special rambasichi for us tonight. Your mom and I got a little surprise for you. Hey, Valerie, you forgot this one. Dear Valerie, first the bad news. Give me that letter. Through trial? Give me that letter. Give it to me. This is Dan Quentin. Give it to me, Lou. What, you got a convict for a pen pal now? Lou, would huh? you give me the letter? But I take your letter. Bastard. You sure know how to pick a winner, huh, Val? got a letter today. Yeah? It was from San Quentin. She's been writing some convict.
writing with this monster. Have you lost your mind? What are you doing reading my mail? How long has this been going on? How long? Mother, stop it. Let me alone. Valerie! Could you write to him? That's none of your business. Answer me, Valerie. I've done nothing wrong. You have. You have no right to read my mail. I've got every right to do what I think is best for you. Has nothing I've said sunk in? How far do you think this thing would have gone? Mother, Adam wouldn't hurt anybody. He couldn't kill a fly. You're so stupid. So blind to the truth. Oh, right, I'm blind. What about you? What do you think Lou does every time he has a few drinks and you're not around? What are you saying? He comes after me, that's what I'm saying, Mother. I don't believe you, Valerie. Lou wouldn't do that. Mother, you're so stupid. Shut up! You always said it was just you and me. But really, it's only been just you. Just you. You said, don't worry about what people think or what they say. Just do what you want to do be yourself, and I did. But because it made you look bad, you jumped all over me. I'm writing Adam Brenner because I know he's innocent. Because I want to. This is Linda Alvarine, aged 18. What Brenner did to her didn't even come out in the trial. Here. Look at it. No, I don't want to look at it, Mother. I don't need this. Look at her. Linda's body isn't lying to you. Look at this photograph. She's telling you the truth. God. You read Adam's letters? You couldn't do any of this to anybody. Not the Adam Brenner who's writing to you, no. No, I'm showing you the other Adam Brenner. The one who picked up Linda Alberine in the parking lot. The one who raped her in the back of the van while he strangled her to death. Stop it! The one who sunk his teeth into her like some rabid dog. That's the sick <laughs> son of a bitch who did this. No, he couldn't have. He didn't do it, I know. Oh. <laughs> Tom and Harriet Banks are the lucky winners of this past weekend's Super Lottery draw. The pair came forward to claim their lucky. <laughs>
Susie Q and the Andrews. Get up. Let me show you something. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Spot me. Maybe you'll learn something. Hey, can I see her? You're a lucky guy. She's a fox. I've got a disturbance with a possible man down. Now it's your turn. Hit the wall, now! Hit the wall! Come on, you two over there! Get over there! Get over there! Get over there! Get on my client. For his own safety, Adam Brenner had to be removed from San Quentin. He'll be held at the county jail until his arraignment. Will this new murder charge in any way affect your efforts to overturn your client's previous conviction? Not at all. His initial trial was a travesty of justice, which led directly to this tragic event. If I was you, I'd just go for the gusto. I'd say, hey, my man, why don't you do us all a favor and gas my sorry ass? <laughs> <laughs> Me like that. Oh, don't you talk to me like that either. Who do you think you are? Hey, man, who you, you get out of our face. Hey, listen, turkey man. Get out of our face. 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 Don't you push on me. Hey, 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 Get 
I got. Come on, let's go. I think I got a wife and three kids, but... Come on! Now, he escaped with two other guys, so we can't be sure who's in that car. My guess is he's headed in your direction. Oh, my God. We're going to give you as much protection as we possibly can. Now, I'd warn Valerie. And Susan, keep your gun close. I will. Thanks for calling, Harry. I'll talk to you. I don't think that we need any music.
want you to promise me something. What? If you see Brenner, if he tries to contact you in any way, promise me you'll tell me immediately. I promise. Coke. You're gonna worry yourself into social security. Look, why don't you just get me a cheeseburger? I gotta go hit the ladies' room. Oh, excuse me. Hi, gorgeous. Hi yourself. Do I know you from somewhere? Well, I hope so, Valerie. Well, whoever you are, you've got great eyes. But the name's not Valerie, so I guess I'll see you around. Wait a minute. What's the matter? <laughs> it's me, Adam. Come on, let's get out of here. I don't know who the hell you are, Adam, but my name isn't Valerie. And if you don't leave me alone, I'm going to call for help. Wait a minute. Let What's go of my name? arm. Valerie. Let go of my arm. expect you to be there. Hi. Listen. I've been thinking about a few things. And I want to see you tonight. I hope it's all right. Uh, yeah, sure. Except I'm, I'm stuck at the office for at least another Sir, hour. Is Valerie home? Not yet. Wait. I hear a car coming. Yeah, it looks like she's with James. Do you want to talk with her? No. No, it's all right. Just promise me you won't let her out of your sight till I get there. What's the matter with you? What's 
Sorry. You threatened to call for help. What was that all about? Valerie. Your mom called. You should be home in about an hour. You're not alone. All right. All right. We'll have to meet someplace. Can you tell me where? I'll get there as fast as I can. Um, maybe an hour less, if I can. All right, I'll meet you in the parking lot. In 45 minutes. You better hurry, because I won't wait. What time is it? Six minutes past seven. Where's Mom? She said she was stuck at the office. Something wrong? Can you give me a ride to school, please? Your mom made me promise not to let you out of my sight until she got here. James, hi. I've been trying to call you. Oh, uh, I couldn't hear the phone. Listen, I need to ask you a big favor. I need to get a ride to school, if you could. Please, I don't know, I can't explain right now. It's, it's just really important. Okay, I'll, I'll be over as soon as I finish up. Okay, when you get here, um, just wait and I'll, I'll, I'll meet you outside. Please hurry. Tracy. Valerie. Valerie, I gave your mom my word that you'd stay here because we've got a few things to clear up. I'd love to. Oh! <laughs>
are you doing here? I got tired of waiting. Valerie. I have to finish getting ready, and then we'll go. How did you know what I looked like? Sandy isn't my type. You're so pretty. Much prettier than you think you are. Where, Lou? How did you get past me? Please. Don't. We've waited such a long time for this.
Mommy.
Mallory. Mother, come on, it's just me, Valerie. Where else to go?